Well, Hillary Clinton was in the news this week. You may have seen this. She was given a very prestigious award by the Elton John Foundation. She is voted the future president, most likely to look like Elton John. <laughs> then you have a vice president, Joe Biden, a man with 35 years of experience in Washington. You combine that with Barack Obama, you will look at 40 years of experience. <laughs> Does NSA spying scandal that worry anybody? Hey, we said we wanted a president that listened to all Americans. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta give Obama credit. You got Osama bin Laden. I mean, that, that was an amazing story. I mean, Osama bin Laden lived in that house in Pakistan for six years with seven women and 23 children. I'm surprised the guy didn't shoot himself in that. <laughs> <laughs> A little better for GM Chrysler, they're doing good. But a rough year for Toyota. They had the big $16 million class action lawsuit, and then the Corolla had those safety issues. Well, you see what happened last Wednesday at Toyota? This is not good. I guess two of the crash test dummies refused to get in the car. <laughs> General Motors are having trouble with engine fires. Oh, it's like when they bring in the corporate lawyers to explain stuff. Well, Your Honor, Your Honor, the consumer is duly warned the vehicle could become flammable at any time. Your Honor, it says on the side of the vehicle, Chevy Blazer. We couldn't make any Blazer. <laughs> <laughs> but they had a stupid car thing coming home from work the other day. I don't know that far from the office. I'm on the 101 freeway. In front of me is one of these huge Lincoln Navigators, you know the big SUV? And the kids are in the back seat and they're watching a movie on the DVD screen, and I'm right behind them. Now I'm watching the movie, okay? <laughs> when they change lanes, I'm changing lanes. Two hours later, I'm some guy's driveway up in Big Bear trying to see the end of Ice Age, like an idiot, like an idiot. Oh, but I'm sorry, how presumptuous is this? You ever hear this guy on the radio? Test drive. A Jaguar today. You know, it's not a Jaguar, okay? It's a Jaguar. This guy is an id I hit, okay? I'm sorry. I'm not on schedule. I don't go to hospital. Well, the most annoying one, they're running a, what, a month and a half ago for Lexus, where this yuppie couple waits for us Christmas morning and they realize they've each given each other a new Lexus. <laughs> what a funny mistake that is. What kind of Republican Christmas is this supposed to be? <laughs> and how is this supposed to make ordinary people feel, huh? I mean, your wife is sitting there with a brand new George Foreman lean, mean grilling machine. <laughs> this guy's old lady's got a Lexus. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, you know what you know they got to borrow for two weeks over the holiday? Um, the smart car? The smart car? Have you seen this thing? What a cheery old box this thing. <laughs> Oh, it's a nice car. It's got no power. I put a bag of groceries on the seat next to me. Got a downshift to keep it moving. You know what? It's little. You don't realize how little these cars are until you drive them. I'm driving a stupid thing. Pull up, rounds open the door, hit this wall. It's not of this wall being here. What's the curb? <laughs> you got it set up to cut grass now. <laughs> bought a new car this year. Bought a GM. You know, I like GM cars. I like American cars. When you buy a GM car now, it comes with OnStar. Have you got this in your car? OnStar? In the event of an accident, OnStar will notify the authorities. Really? Is that what I want? My car calling the cops on me? Jay, hit a tree! Jay, hit a tree! Shut up, OnStar! Jay, hit a tree! Jay, hit a tree! And what's OnStar? 300 bucks a year? For that kind of money, they should be covered in my ass. An accident? No, I think Leno's in Vegas. Woo-hoo! <laughs> 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 and of course, the price of gas easing up again. How much is oil a barrel? Anybody know what is it? How much is this week? Ninety-seven dollars a barrel. I mentioned this because I got a Ford F-150 pickup truck. I filled it up the other day. It was one hundred twelve dollars. I know I didn't use a whole barrel. Okay. <laughs> Somebody owes me at least this much barrel. <laughs> oh, like. The other night, I see the scientists on the news, and the scientist says, uh, panda droppings can be used as biofuel, thus reducing our dependence on foreign oil. Well, there are like 10 pandas left in the world now. Like, it's every time I want to go to the store, i got to run down the zoo with some x lax and a coffee can. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Give me two more. Give me two more. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah. Like I'm watching a scene the other day on the uh, Discovery Channel about these alternative fuel vehicles, and they show the electric car <gasps> with the lithium-ion battery and the fuel cell car that runs on pure hydrogen. Then they show this man in England. This is real. Man in England developed a car that runs on urine. The fuel the car uses is urine. Exactly. And you know, good luck with this. <laughs> I mean, first of all, how are you even going to fill the tank? <laughs> I mean, can we be honest here? Most men can't hit a toilet bowl. They're not holding this <laughs> man. How are they going to hit that little fuel door? Right? All they're going to do is ruin the whole side of the car. That's what they're going to do. Just came in from Los Angeles, of course. Fire, floods, mudslides, earthquakes, estates, broke. You just redid our lottery again. You probably better about the guy in Sacramento won the $50 million. Now, I guess, what is it, a dollar a year for 50 million years? <laughs> See, Los Angeles is an odd city to live in because it seems normal while you're living there. It's not you leave Los Angeles and come to a truly normal place. It's just that so many abnormal things happen there on a regular basis. People have begun to accept that as normal. Look, like, I'm not making this up. Last May, a woman in Santa Monica out jogging, 11.30 in the morning, eaten by a mountain lion. <laughs> you guys have an L.A. Glendale, seven foot black bears coming out of the hills, <laughs> ripping off the of towns, knocking over garbage. And, L.A. is the only city in the world. You can get your car. You can stop at a light on Sunset Boulevard, get carjacked. Oh my God. Thank God those gang kids didn't kill us. Thank God they just took the car. Ah, <laughs> mountain lion! <laughs> run past a crack house only to be eaten by a wild animal. <laughs> and there's a man, there's a man you see on the news every year in Los Angeles. I don't know this man's name. You see him on your local news here. Every year this man rebuilds his house in the middle of a place called the Tahunga Wash. Then it rains for the whole month of February. Then the first week of March, all the news crews go out to talk to him. He says the same thing every year. <laughs> Everything is gone! Everything is gone! What are you going to do next year? We're going to rebuild! Why don't you go eight feet to the left next year? Why don't you just live? This is called the hunger wash for a reason. Don't you see those appliances on the hill from last year? I know it's sunny now, but it's going to rain again. It's like Malibu. Why does anybody even want to live in Malibu? Isn't it fairly obvious by this point, God has a major problem with the people of Malibu. I mean, you watch this. What is there, a natural holocaust, a Pacific Coast Highway, eight, nine, ten times? It's like God just hovers over Malibu. What? They're still making the point always. <laughs> oh, and then you all see these dopey rich celebrities on the news. We don't know what happened. We built an all-natural home out of kindling on a dry hill. We don't know how the fire started. How do you think the fire started? You're an idiot. You're living in Malibu. In fact, we had these horrible fires just three weeks ago. 30, 40 houses waked up in 20 minutes. Winds come whipping through the canyons. I remember seeing this man, was, I can't get this man's face out of my mind. This poor man went back to his house. Every single thing the man owned burned to the ground. Can you imagine? Every single thing the man owned burned to the ground, except for this one little bag of easy to light charcoal briquettes. <laughs> <laughs> if you read the king's sort of sign, there's a sad sign. <laughs> Then we have the earthquakes and the aftershock. That's another big LA word, aftershock. You know, I don't know who's doing PR for these earthquake people, but whoever dreamed of this aftershock scheme, it's not an aftershock, okay? It's another earthquake! <laughs> women, women, you have twins. People don't go, she had a baby. Oh, look, there's an after baby. It's not an after baby. There's another baby, it's just as big as the first baby. <laughs> oh, and they always give you the stupid earthquake advice. What are you supposed to do in an earthquake, anybody? Yes. What? Oh, what did you say? Stand in a door. That's right, sir. In case of an earthquake, stand in a door. Oh, that's great. You know what that means? That means that there is an earthquake. The only people left alive are going to be hookers, transients, winos. Who else is hanging around doorways? <laughs> oh, and they all say that animals know. This is an argument my wife and I have. My wife's got this cat. Oh, the cat will know <laughs> if there's going to be an earthquake. I don't want to say how stupid. You know, she's right there. You know? We had the big earthquake, what, 10 years ago, January? 4.30 morning, so the earthquake hit. Cat turned off the gas, put new batteries in the flight. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow they sense. <laughs> See, I don't really care if the cat knows, okay? Because it's not like this animal left one paw to help anybody else out the entire family. My wife has had this stupid cat now for 11 years. The thing sleeps 23 and a half hours a day, okay? It doesn't even meet the minimum basic requirements of a pet. But then do 
way that a pet is supposed to do. All I'm saying is, Kitty, you have information to save the family. Just share it. What am I asking? <laughs> yeah, I knew the cat knew the earthquake was coming. I remember lying in bed. I remember 4.29 in the morning, one minute before the earthquake hit, the cat runs off the bed. And where's the kitty going? Ah! I'm covered in sheetrock. Kitty's in the doorway. Meow, 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 meow. Thanks, Kitty. Thanks for nothing. See, I like dogs. And I think women know why men like dogs. Men like dogs because a dog will pretend to be interested while the man is talking. <laughs> See, men know this. And women know this. It's like sex. Just pretend you're interested, okay? Looking gonna be a good two to two and a half minutes. Throwing a couple of oohs and ahs. Trying to go along with the program. And everybody gets to go home early. Okay, there's, there's your key to life right there. And you ever see a man talk to a dog, and God bless him, you know, that dog is generally fascinating. <laughs> Why everything the man is saying, the ears are sticking up, the eyes are dead up. What guy has ever had anything to pay attention to him like that in his whole life? I wish I had your life, fella. I had somebody putting a bowl of food in front of me every day at 6 o'clock for doing absolutely nothing. The dog is vivid. <laughs> All right, go on outside, go on, go on. Boy, that is one smart animal. <laughs> You ever see men try to talk to cats? <laughs> and another thing, hey, don't walk out of the room while I'm talking. Hey! Hey, your cat is an idiot! A stupid cat. Cats run away. You know, my wife and I watch TV one day this summer. It's like 90 degrees at midnight. I got the front door open, maybe this much. I'm trying to get some fresh air. Like, you know, the door over the kitty got out. He's going to die outside. Of course he'll die. He's an animal. How could he possibly spend the night outside? <laughs> Here I am driving around and then I look at the cat Ooh, like the cat's going to stick to the main road. <laughs> See, at least when you lose a dog, there is a certain manly dignity in looking for the dog. Men actually enjoy going out to look for... When you look for the dog, you can feel like a man. You ever see men after summer, they go out there on the porch, right? Got one leg up on that stoop. Here, King! Here, Rex! Come on, boy! Come on, fella! Yeah! Come on, boy! Yeah! You need to sound like a man. You're looking for a dog. There's a bonding experience that goes back, what, a thousand years? Man, dog, hunter, best friend. You ever look for a cat at night? It's like you're some kind of pedophile. Or something. Now you're in people's bushes. I was used to making the creepiest, most disgusting noises. Kitty, 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 and you have the one? I guess there were two, but one disappeared. I see. And you always been a cat lady? Yeah. She found you, that's all always happened. See, you never will always pretend to like your cat when you think you have a cat. I would love to meet your cat. What a terrific friend he must be. And whenever you date women with cats, now you should you may have gone through this. Because this usually happens. 10 days to two weeks into that initial dating cycle to test you, the woman will slip into the cat speech. Men know I'm talking about, right? You'll be having dinner then for no reason at all. The woman goes into that cat speech. I mean, you know, cats are very independent. You know, cats think for themselves. You know, cats eat when they want. Cats sleep when they want. You know, cats can disappear for days at a time and then show up just as if nothing ever happened. See, everything women hate about a man, they love about a cat. <laughs> 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 <laughs>